let us pray. Mighty God, once again we bless your name. We worship you for the opportunity and the privilege to learn at your feet once again. Father, we pray that you teach us your word in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We give all the glory to God for today. This is the last lecture for today. We worship His holy name. We adore Him. We thank Him for seeing us through the first lecture. We thank Him for seeing us through the next, second lecture. We thank Him for being with us at the third lecture. And this is the fourth lecture today and the last lecture for today. Glory be to his name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You will remember for quite some time we have been talking about power gifts. And we say there are three power gifts. They are the gift of faith, the gift of healings, and the working of miracles. We have been talking about the gift of faith for some time. You remember that we said the gift of faith is needed for special deliverance. We also see the gift of faith operates in casting out the devil. We discussed that yesterday. Today we want to discuss about raising the dead by the gift of faith, raising the dead by the gift of faith. First and foremost, we want to see where the Lord Jesus Christ raised the dead. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Are you there? Mark chapter 5. I read from verse 21. And when Jesus was passed over again by the sheep unto the other side, much people gather unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and besought him greatly, say, My little daughter lies at the point of death. I pray thee, call and lay thy hand on her, that she may be healed. And she is I lead. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him, and threw him. Let me jump to verse 35. Verse 35. Why he yes be? There came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, certain we say that daughter is dead. Why trouble thou the master any further? And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him. Save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seared the tumult, and with them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was coming, he said unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not there, but sleepeth, and they laugh him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, 
he took the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and enter in where the damsel was lying fast 41 and he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her talitakumi that is being interpreted damsel i say unto thee arise and straight away the damsel arose and walked for he was the of the age of 12 years and they were astonished with a great astonishment jesus got to the place where the dead girl was lying down the bible say he took his hand he took her hand and said damsel i say unto thee arise and we are told in verse 42 mark chapter 5 verse 42 and straightway the damsel arose and walked for she was about the age of 12 years and they were astonished with a great astonishment jesus said to the dead gay damsel i say unto thee arise in actual sense he was not speaking to the cops because the corpse is already dead What do we call death? James, open your Bible. James, chapter two. James, chapter two. I read verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So when we say somebody is dead, what we are saying is that the spirit of that person has left the body. And if the spirit come back into that body, that person will arise. And so when the Lord Jesus Christ spoke and said, say, I say unto you, arise. He was not addressing the body that was lying down. He was addressing the spirit that has already gone out. And in other words, he was telling the spirit, come back into that body so that this lifeless body can arise. And the spirit had the voice of Jesus in the realm of the spirit where he has already entered. I use the word he, not she. I use the word he. It's not a mistake. It's deliberate. Because 
the spirit of man there is nothing like female spirit and male spirit every spirit of man is made in the image of god so they are he when the bible is talking in Romans chapter 8 verse 14 he say as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god you didn't see that idea because the spirit man has no daughter has no son or the spirit man is man because we are created in the image of god in john chapter 1 first say as many as you receive as many as receiving even as many as believe on his name to then give you power to become the sons of god whether a gay or a boy, they are sons of God. Because they are spirit, there is nothing like female spirit, there is nothing like male spirit. All the woman spirit are created in the image of God. So Jesus was talking to the spirit of the gay. See? Arise. In other words, go back to that body. And the spirit hear the voice of Jesus. How? Because there is no relationship between the physical and the spirit realm. People in the spirit realm, the spirit there, yeah, has nobody. But yet he can hear because when you are operating in faith, faith doesn't belong to the physical world. Faith believe, belongs to the spirit realm. The spirit could hear the voice of Jesus. Because that word was released in faith. Look at Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 11, I read verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever I say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which is here shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever is here. When he was talking about it, he keep on talking about the art. If you believe in his art, now the heart there is your human spirit. The faith, believing, is what makes your human spirit to go out. I infect what he said to bring what he said, what is commanded in the spirit realm into reality. So immediately that word that is released, if it is said in faith, becomes a spirit released. And that spirit is released into the spirit realm. Or sin realm. And once it is released out, it goes out as a messenger. If it is from your heart, 
that word we appear in the spirit realm as you to accomplish the purpose for which look at Isaiah chapter 55 Isaiah chapter 55 I read verse 11 So say my word be that going forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me for it but it shall accomplish that which I plead and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it Why? Because anytime God speaks, God speaks in faith. His heart normally follows his word out. Because it's pronounced out of faith. So when Jesus said, damn say. I say unto thee, arise. That word that came out of the mouth of Jesus became a spirit being and grabbed the hand of that lady in the spirit realm, grabbed a spirit. You know the reason why I use spirit now and not a spirit. Grab a spirit and bring it back to the body. And the lady opened her eyes. Now, what made that possible is not the word that was pronounced. What made that possible is the faith from the heart. Without any doubt. That give the word the backing. And it is that faith that bring restoration. One of the person that was there that day was Peter. He witnessed everything that happened. So, sometimes later, somebody else died. And they sent for Peter. And let's see what Peter did. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. I read verse 36. Now there was a Joppa, a certain disciple's name, Tabitha. We, by interpretation, is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and hands did, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. Whom when they had washed, they laid her in, the up, in an upper chamber. And for as much as a leader was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was called, they brought him into the upper chamber. And all the widows stood by him weeping, and saw him the coats and garment which Dorcas made, while he was alive. But Peter put them all forth. He chased all of them out. 
the same way Jesus Christ chased all the people that are weeping and crying at the damn set out, out. Because faith cannot manifest in the atmosphere of crying and weeping. And we say we are exercising faith. It's not something that is emotional. It's something that has to do with your heart. It's based on concrete information. So he chased them out. Look at verse 40. But Peter pulled them all forth, forth and kneeled down and pray. You see that? And kneeled down and pray. When he was leaning down to pray, he was not leaning down and facing the cops. He was leaning down and prayed to God. Why was he praying? He needs help. So he prayed. But when God gave him a gift of faith, look at what happened. Fast 40. But Peter put them all for and kneel down and pray and turn. You see that? And turning in to the body. He was not facing the body before because he was not addressing the body when he was praying. He was addressing God. God. I want you to release the spirit of this woman. Let our spirit come back. See all these widows weeping. See all these widows cry. They are already missing her. Because they have been useful to the church. This is not the time for her to go. Oh Lord, give her more time. He prayed that prayer, he prayed that prayer, he prayed that prayer until he had the assurance in his heart that God has answered. That is when he stood up. But Peter putting forth, putting them, put them all forth and kneel down and pray. And turning him to the body, said, Tabitha, arise. Now, turning to the body now, he turned to the body in the attitude of faith. He knew as at that point in time, he was not having any doubt in his heart. He now have what we call gift of faith. His heart is filled with faith. There is no altar of doubt in his heart. He knew as at that point in time, whatever he said, he will have it. And he said, Tabitha, arise. And what happened? And she opened her eyes. And when he saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and the widow, presented her alive. So he take the gift of faith to raise the dead. Human spirit that has gone out of the body. We hear the voice of faith. And they will turn back to the body. Look at John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Are you there? John chapter 5. Open your Bible. John chapter 5.
Look at verse 28. Jesus is the one speaking here. He said, My full not are these. For the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. Verse 23 is what I want to read. Look at verse 23. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, unto you, the hour is coming, and now he is when the day shall hear his voice, voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. It's not a voice of doubt, too. it's a voice of faith. This, when you speak in faith, the spirit of a dead follow we hear and come back. When we are talking about faith, we are talking about all faith. All faith means there is no room for any doubt. Look at First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter thirteen. First Corinthians chapter 13. I read verse 2. And though I have all the gift of prophecy, prophecy, and I understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I can remove mountain, you need all faith. Heart filled with faith with, without any outer of doubt. Another name for the gift of faith is all faith. You make a pronouncement with confidence, without any doubt that what you say will come to pass. Peter say, Tabitha, arise! He didn't say it twice. And the person that was dead opened an eyes. Was you made that pronouncement in faith the spirit will come back to the body. You don't see the spirit, you are seeing the body. But wherever the spirit is, you will hear that voice. Because the spirit is the man that is there. The body just the house where he lives. So wherever he is, you will hear that voice because it's a voice of faith. Then they will return back to the body. When they return back to the body is when we say the dead has arise. So from today, you begin to raise the dead. The only thing you need is to speak to the dead and say, Arise. With the heart full of faith, all faith, without any doubt. And you begin to see the miracles from today in the name of Jesus. Bow down your head as we pray. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word today. Help me to believe your word. Help me to put them into practice. Go ahead and pray. Talk to God in prayer.